Carmen Melanie Spitter is haunted by the past. Not a day goes by without her thinking of her many relatives who were brutally murdered by the Nazis. I no longer have a family. I'm on my own because my whole family was killed. Carmen Spitter belongs to Germany's Sinti minority. She's hoping to get closer to her ancestors by visiting the Auschwitz concentration camp. But it's a painful journey into the past and a search for her own identity. Hey, now easy. What's bothering you, sweetie? Carmen lives in Frankfurt am Main and earns a living by cooking for a catering firm. But the thing that defines her more than anything else is the fact that she belongs to the Sinti minority that was persecuted and murdered during Hitler's dictatorship in Germany. From an early age, my mom told me everything and showed me pictures. I grew up looking at black and white photos filled with dead people and more dead people. This picture shows her mother, Melanie Spitter, as a child. She would go on to become the first person to devote herself intensively to the Nazis' systematic murder of Romani people. One supporter of her work was writer and Nobel laureate Gunter Grass. Now Carmen keeps the remnants of her family history in an old chest of drawers. When I open this drawer and smell these old papers and documents, it makes my stomach turn. Almost all members of the family were deported by the Nazis from Belgium to the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp, where they were murdered. Carmen's uncle Rudi was one of them. This is our Rudi. At school. This is before the deportation. And that's a cousin who was also killed in Auschwitz. They took a photo of the two together in Hasselt. This is the nomad, the gypsy card, from my great-grandfather, Josef Georg Elster Keck. Then as now, gypsy was used as a derogatory term for Romani people. This is my grandmother. God rest her soul. My grandmother lost her mother, her two children, almost all her siblings, her nieces, nephews, and cousins in Auschwitz. In Auschwitz verloren. Carmen Spitter has made it her life's work to tell their story and keep the memory of her family alive, along with the memory of an estimated 500,000 European Romani people who didn't survive the Nazi regime. She's heading out to meet a friend, another Sintitsa, whose family history was deeply shaped by Nazi crimes. Manja Schuka Weiss, is a social worker. She has found that many children and grandchildren of Holocaust survivors suffer from depression or anxiety attacks. And there is a technical term for this, transgenerational transmission of trauma. It's interesting that you were always around these topics growing up, even at the breakfast table, because your mother was so involved with Auschwitz, genetic research. Mengele. But in our house, nobody talked about it to protect the children. My father couldn't read or write, and that was just normal to me because that's the way I knew him. But once my eldest niece asked, Papu, why can't you read and write? And he said, because Hitler stole my book bag. So she began telling everyone that, and we understood that Hitler was a bad guy, stealing the children's book bags, but that's all we were told. My father didn't say anything else. That's very different. And yet, Carmen, I was affected, even if you don't talk about it. 
it's there. And that's the beauty of it, you see. I'm getting all emotional. It's okay. Because up until two years ago, I didn't know why I was so anxious, what was wrong with me, ever since I was a child. But when we talked about it, I knew. I'm no longer alone. That's already a step in the healing process. Absolutely. It feels so good to be able to reflect on it, and now there's some awareness about the topic. In Poland, Carmen wants to lay wreaths at the Auschwitz concentration camp memorial to remember her ancestors. She spent a long time preparing for this with the help of her trauma therapist. It took me a long time to decide whether I should go on this trip. Many people were worried about whether I could handle it. I've always dreamt of Auschwitz, of dead bodies, corpses, blood and massacres. But I told myself it would bring me peace. From February 1943, Romani people were rounded up inside what was then the German Reich and its occupied territories. They were then deported to the Auschwitz extermination camp. The Romani were considered inferior by the Nazis and, like Jewish people, were excluded from society. In Auschwitz, they were held in a separate area, the so-called Gypsy Camp, explains guide Eva Pasterak. Here you see the first unloading ramp. The majority of the deported Romani people also came to Auschwitz-Birkenau along this train track. The gypsy camp for families is over here. And this is the laboratory where Josef Mengele carried out his criminal experiments. At the end of the track, in Camp 2, there was the gas chamber and crematorium. Number two, number three, number four, and number five. Josef Mengele was the camp doctor who carried out inhumane medical experiments on prisoners. Today, a permanent exhibition in Block 13 of the memorial commemorates the murder of Romani people. Adolf Elster, Anne Marie Elster, Auguste is my, is my great grandmother. Friedrich Elster, Janet, Johann, Johann, Josef Elster is, is my uncle. Crescentia Elster is, is my Papu's wife. Papu. Rudolf Elster is, is our Rudy. Rudy. Wilhelmine Elster is also my relative. Verwandte. Rosa Elster, meine my grandmother. Und Rudolf Elster. I keep thinking about my grandmother, who was seven months pregnant when she came here, and our Rudy, who was only 13. He ended up in the hands of that dog Mengele. My grandmother went to the sick barracks where she saw him. He was sitting on the cold floor, naked with five others under one blanket, and said to her, I'm not getting out of here alive. For the Sinti people, Auschwitz is the largest cemetery of their ancestors. And the remains of Carmen's relatives are also buried here. They are here somewhere. And I can feel it. Deep down, it gives me some joy knowing that I'm able to bring them something and to know that they're close to me.
22,600 Romani people were deported to Auschwitz, and only some 4,000 survived. After returning home, Carmen attends a Sinti cultural event in Freiburg, titled Our Turn to Speak, with reflections from a younger generation of Sinti, who still face exclusion and prejudice, according to Jakob Shabir. As soon as I would identify myself as Sinti, I had to listen to all the typical stereotypes. Oh, you're all nomads with your tarot cards and magic. When everyone keeps pointing the finger at you, at some point you ask yourself, are we the problem? Between 80 and 120,000 Romani people live in Germany, yet many hide their background fearing prejudice. It took me three years to find out that my cousins were going to my school. They had said that they were Turkish. And that's where the issue starts, by having to hide your identity in society, instead of being able to be open about it. For her part, Carmen has always followed her foster grandfather's motto, never forget your roots, be proud of who you are. My mom was always being asked by scientists and academics, how did you get all this knowledge, Mrs. Spitter? You're so well read. My mom always just had to laugh and say, you know, I learned how to read and write. Unlike my mother and grandmother, they didn't get that opportunity. And that's it. Now we can create spaces for people to meet as equals. That wasn't the case back then because there was a wall. Fortunately, that wall has come down. Absolutely. Which is Carmen Spitter's mission in life, tearing down the walls that remain to inspire the younger generation to continue the struggle for equality.